of steel, pole of steel, build pole of steel, pole of steel, and pole of steel, and pole of steel, pole of steel, and pole of steel, and pole of steel. Hi, Cicerin here with another video, and this time we are going to be talking about the upcoming Mayhem League. I'm going to give some tips and tricks, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing, and I'm going to do some predictions on what is going to be some of the strongest builds for racing, especially focused on like going fast and going demis. Uh, and I made a little notepad and I'll also be talking about which ones are probably going to be the highest risk to go for. Like for example, Assassin and Trickster are probably going to be super competitive for getting a demigod. Basically the strategy early on will be farming a lot of rogue exiles to get a lot of gear early on to get some, some decent resistance and stuff so you don't get killed or uh, shot very quickly down by the exiles and invasion monsters. Going a little bit slower in the start helps a lot and overgearing a little bit. A lot of people will be farming a Tabula Rasa in, for example, Tidal Island. It's very, very common. Especially once you get one or two, like, Magic Finder rarity items. People sometimes go back into it. Uh, and some people will get, like, level 12, maybe level 15. And then go Tidal Island to farm Rogue Exiles. Because there's so few uniques that can drop that early in the game. That um, it's very, very likely that you will drop a Tabula. Do remember that there is no heist in mayhem so anything that is in heist right now you do not have access to you also do not have access to the crazy experience farm in heist with doing like tunnels or repository which would pipe people would be using a flashback for sure so call of steel bills are slightly weaker uh than they will be in the upcoming flashback for most people best mods in order is going to be boxes harbinger invasion anarchy breach and spirits Invasion can be extremely good and arguably the best for just experience. Also depends a little bit on your build. But boxes has so good, like this is strong boxes. They have so good sustain of like they'll give you a lot of currency from Arcanist boxes. You'll get loads of diviners and just like so many like maps and stuff will be dropping. So you can very easily sustain tier 16s in this. And then Harbinger is really good to get ancient orbs. Either to ancient orb for specific uniques like maybe you really need an obliteration. Or you really want to go for a headhunter, and that's pretty doable in this. Uh, with Ancient Or being a headhunter inside a Nemesis map. Spirits is by far the worst thing. It doesn't have a single positive side to it. You obviously don't care about Spirits possessing a rare and then that dropping one extra rare item. Doesn't really matter. You are most likely... In a lot of scenarios, you're probably better instantly leaving a ghosted map. Because of ghosts like Martyr, the one that makes monsters explode. When you kill them, it's so dangerous to be in a Spirits map. Breach as well is a giant waste of time. They've nerfed Breach so much that it's like, it's so slow to expand. It's not that much density. Uh, and all of the other mods are so much better. So all of these are okay to do. I would probably avoid doing Breach and Spirits. Do remember, this is an XP race. It's all about being, uh, if you want a demigod especially, it's all about being top five in each ascendancy. I've talked a little bit about uh, how I'm going to do my Watchstone setup and how many I'm going for. Um, I'm most likely going to be playing Assassin Blade Blast going into Blade Vortex. I think that's going to be the fastest or at least highly competitive for like global rank one. So that's what I'm going to play. I think I'm going to go, I think it was 13 watchstones that I'm going to go for. I don't need any boss kills or anything like that. So I'm most likely, uh, the number one thing I'll be going for is four watchstones on turn's end and then three watchstones on Lex Proxima. That is most likely going to be my end game setup. So we can like show and talk a little bit about the Atlas setup here. Here, you have Grotto as a guaranteed tier 16. This is really, really nice. And then I have OK tier 15s. It's Promenade and Crater. Both of these are pretty OK with all of like the special mods like strong boxes and things like that. Over here, if I somehow do run out of the others, I have between Ramparts and Curse Crypt that I'd be like most likely just spamming Ramparts as my tier 13. If I'm able to get favorite map in Glenar Cairns, then I will highly consider having four Watchstones here as well. Because if I have favorite maps, then I can get Tropical Island. And it should be pretty easy to have a very healthy map pool in this. And if I can have, like, basically between Grotto and Tropical Island, I'd be very, very happy. But I would need to farm up several favorite maps for that. And I don't 100% know if uh, it's worth the time. So I might just go for one. Budget scenario, I only need seven Watchstones. Because I don't care about any of, like, the, the lower maps. And for early farming, with, like, just two Watchstones then uh, tier 10 maps is pretty good here. It's between Grotto and Temple. Uh, and sure. So for like, that's for like early ones. Avoiding ghosts and invasion monsters inside trials. So like those like Uber Lab trials that you do, if you get ghosts or invasion there, especially if you're hardcore or hardcore soul cell phone, you need to leave. You need to stop 
doing what you're doing and just instantly leave, they end up all spawning in either one spot or two spots. So you either get them all midway through or at the end. So if there's ghosts, there'll be like 10 to 15 ghosts in one rear. It will learn Flicker Strike because it's so fast. It'll just like vibrate over to you and one shot you. And if it's invasion monsters and you get unlucky with the mobs, you'll just get like bullied down by like all the mobs that spawn. Super, super scary. And ghost and invasion can be very dangerous in general. Ghosts can spawn quite a lot in the actual throne room with the Zaro. Make sure you kill them before he gets up. Uh, so like maybe quickly exploring the room while he's like getting up and getting ready to fight you is a good idea because they can't possess him super early or super instantly. And invasion monsters in the la final room can be very dangerous. Do remember that the porcupine no longer has reflect. So I'll be doing Assassin Blade Blast, the build I did in the gauntlet. I'll probably be doing it slightly differently. I do have a guide for this, which we can link in the description. I don't think I'll be following the guide exactly because I don't really think there's a need for me to go perfect agony. Pretty decent on softcore and you can get pretty insane damage, but there's no reason for that, I think. So I'll be going very, very similar to how I played it in the gauntlet. And then I'll also most likely be switching over to Blade Vortex. A bit of a different strategy I'll be doing is probably trying to farm a Void Eye or whatever that plus five unset ring unique is called. And I will be uh, putting my Plague Berry in there. And most likely I'll be leveling, leveling six Plague Berries in my Alphan to try to get a 21 Plague Berry and then running around with Obliterations. And I think Assassin or Trickster are going to be the two most highly competitive for Global Rank 1. Both Software Trade and Hardcore Soul Alphan are very, very competitive. So difficult to get demigods uh, in any of those, which is like, it's like a trophy. It's a trophy item and it looks really cool. As far as builds, Assassin Blade Blast or Blade Vortex is going to be most likely for Assassin. And I do have a guide for that I'll be posting. Trickster, Essence Strain, very high risk as well. And I do have a guide we'll link. But yeah, Essence Strain should be very, very competitive. Maybe the most competitive. Saboteur, I honestly don't know. I don't really play Saboteur enough, but with discussing with a few other racers and my chat, Lightning Trap, even though it's not like that amazing, it doesn't have that amazing damage, but it is very fast. And you could get the Incursion Temple Glove, so it makes it even faster. Like the Blood Magic cast, uh, cast Speed is Trap Casting Speed. Arc Mines and Icicle Mines as well could be very, very competitive. I'd say this is like mid to high risk, but I, I, I think we're only going to see one or two good racers. Champion, pretty much like between Crown Slam or Leap Slam with Call of Steel. I'd be surprised if top 5 was anything else than a Call of Steel build for champ. On Gladiator, it's mo it could be Call of Steel for basically any of the melee ascendancies. That wouldn't really surprise me. You probably have a pretty good chance of anything with Call of Steel in top 5 there. For Gladiator, probably like someone like Alk might go something like Bleed, either Blow, Bow, Bow, Lacerate, or EQ. Champion is definitely high risk. I think there's going to be a, light, a lot of champions, probably quite a lot of Gladiators. Slayer is probably more like lower risk. I don't really know. You'd probably do something called Steel. Maybe you'd go Cyclone. I don't think Cyclone would be fast enough. Bladestorm could be fast on Slayer. I'm not, I'm not super excited about Slayer. Berserker, I'd say, is fairly likely going to be Call of Steel. You don't have like any of the Berserker spell builds you can do because obviously we don't have heists. You have no alternative skill gems. Fairly safe bet. Most of the top five there would be Call of Steel and they, they are very, very good racing builds. Chieftain, I would say it's a very large, humongous chance that Chieftain is going to be Armageddon brand. Maybe somebody will play Blade Blast, but I feel like you need you would need an explosion chest for that to actually be fast. So Chieftain is most likely going to be Armageddon brand. See if we can find a skill tree for that as well. Juggernaut, fairly guaranteed to be Call of Steel. There's no like really builds other than that, and I don't think Tectonic Slam is viable at all for racing compared to something with Call of Steel. Call of Steel is just extremely strong for anything that I really can use at this link. For all the Ranger Ascendancies, I honestly think Caustic Arrow is probably the best choice. I don't have a guide for this, but we'll try to like poach someone's skill tree and link that in the description down below so that at least if I don't have a guide for it, we'll have an endgame skill tree. For pretty much all of the builds that can pull off and do Call of Steel, I actually think Leap Slam will be pretty surprisingly competitive. I did like maybe five or eight hours of practicing Leap Slam Call of Steel, and it's super strong when you don't need to kill bosses. Uh, it's mostly something I tried for the Quinn Meme League, and it is insanely strong. I thought about running it. I, I hope that we see at least one of the demigods be somebody that's Leap Slamming. That'd be cool. Hierophant as well. I would be surprised if it's not Armageddon Brand, at least winning rank one. 
Stone Inquisitor. I think we're going to see combinations of Bladefall, Blade Vortex, maybe Divine Ire. Guardians? I think most likely Spectre. I feel like Dominating Blow is too slow at starting. And I don't know if you can do Armor, on, armor Bound on a Guardian, but like you can do Syndicate Operatives for sure. Elementalist, you would probably go Blade Vortex. Necromancer, I don't think anything beats Operatives for speed because you are literally just running. Uh, some people have talked about like, oh, Detonate Dead is so strong, but no, Detonate Dead is so strong for killing bosses and high HP enemies. Um, Volta Dead is going to be too slow. There's no other build that is ever going to be as fast, I think, as Operatives. You're literally just running around. So this is the Syndicate Operatives, and I do have a guide for this. And as far as Occultist, which I called Bad Ascendancy, I'm just not a big fan of it. I, I just haven't tried Cold Slinger enough. Maybe it is really good. You do get the Occultist Explosion, which could be really cool. Probably either Blade Vortex or Cold Slinger. Honestly, on this one, I'm going to say I just don't know enough. For Scion, I would say it is between Blade Vortex and Syndicate Operatives. Syndicate Operatives are just incredibly fast clearing. And I'll, I'll try to have like at least skill trees and I'll link to the guides I do have. If I have friends that have done guides for some of the ones I'm recommending, we'll try to link to those as well. But it won't be like super handholdy and stuff like that. And do remember for this race that you cannot change Ascendancy, but you can change Ascendancy points. And you could also wait with Ascending. So for example, I can change from a Natural Strength to Essence Glutton, but I cannot change from a Necromancer to an Occultist. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the Mayhem video. This is definitely a do not miss event. I'd say both this and Delve. Delve will only be fun for a few days, but I think it'll be really, really fun. Both of those, I would say don't miss. And a big thank you to Granny Gigimes um, for putting these amazing events together. And I'll try to make a similar video for Delve, but the event has never existed before. So it's harder to give advice. But thanks for watching and try to die more than I do.